done the same way twice, so there's no reason to set it in stone. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm thank you. Do things. She'll be rejoining us in the third half of today's show for yet another musical number. Can we get a few likes up on there likes for Kim Starling for the Miss Kim Starling? Because that would be awesome. Yeah, you heard it here. Worry. This show has one and a half parts. Yeah, one and a half parts thus far. Don't worry, be happy. Do, 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 do. All right, what's next? I also want to apologize for anyone watching on YouTube. Apparently, I didn't hit start streaming. Right they start, they show. Because you have to hit start streaming, and then it won't let you do it until you press preview. And if you press preview, you have to press play on YouTube, and then there was an app. Yeah, it's so a lot things. of sorry. There's a lot of things. Mash over there, mash, mash, yeah. mash. But it's live on YouTube now, so if any of you are having trouble on Facebook, oh, yeah. it is over there. Go on over there. That's right. It's on the Cigar Box Nation page on yes, YouTube. YouTube.com slash Cigar Box Nation. Boom, it should be there. You can also find all of, well, pretty much all of our old Archive. broadcasts. Over. All right, so here's what's happening, people. We've got a video for you that was submitted by our good buddy, William Edward White, uh, playing some awesome finger-picking yes. uh, uh, music. Whilst, whilst, while that's playing... Glenn Watt and I are going to make the arduous uphill both ways journey to the workbench stage here at CB Giddy, and we are going to commence the assembly of a diddly bow yes. using our CB Giddy diddly bow kit. Uh, I have to admit, it's been a good while since I've looked at this kit, or, or read the instructions, <laughs> or built one. Uh, originally designed in coordination with and with the, the help of Mr. Jim Burt, it was actually his idea. He kind nice. of came to me one day and like, but Giddy, you need a diddly bow kid. He was fixing to do, teach a class or, or do something with school kids and wanted a, a good, basic, straightforward, one-string, unfretted diddly bow. And we came up with it and, by God, been selling them ever since. So uh, uh, somebody mentioned something about it being cold and well, actually, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I know about. our good friend Michael Capato is out, who's out there today. Good to see you, Michael. I know he's out there in uh, Michigander. Yeah, land, and they got out there as well. Yeah. That lake effect snow is brutal. Well, the the polar vortex. We're just on the edges of it here, but I got up this morning, looked out at the thermostat on the porch. It said minus five. Mm. AccuWeather said one. I don't know where they're getting that number, but yeah. Did you see that they're uh, out in Chicago? They're having to burn the rail lines to. They, they wow. soak ropes in kerosene and light them on fire because the steel shrinks oh. and the bolts are coming out of the line, so they have to Welds heat them up breaking. and weld them. Wow. Yeah. I did not see that. It was minus 51 there the other day. That had to be wind chill. Shut anyway, get damn cold wow. out they're, there. They're, they're, they're nicknaming it, what, Siberia? Siberia. Yeah. Siberia. Uh, under other circumstances, that'd be pretty cool. But. To the gulag. Yes. Anyway, uh... We're going to run this video from William Edward White, and when we return, in a whole new world. Well, oh, five feet that way. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, okay, here we go. It's video. awesome. Three, two, two, two one. Ha yeah. <laughs> ha! The gentle breeze from hush of my mountain. Softly blows over lullaby bay. Feels the sail. Sail far away 
tricky but it's the sounds that count sound fantastic yeah buddy all right so here's what we've got we've got on the bench i gotta remember where to look down at this camera uh we have a cb giddy diddly bow kit this is a one string unfretted diddly bow meant for being played with a slide made with a little cigar box designed with jim bird's help to be extremely easy to put together just a couple of tools needed and to demonstrate that I'm going to try to put one together here live on screen. This has not been rehearsed. I don't, I'm not like Julia Childs. And here's the fully bit diddly bow. Hop about it. No, this is starting from scratch. You like that Julia Childs impersonation? Good. I've been working on that, people. Um, just a reminder, I know Shane's been posting it, but we really are excited. want you to know about this sale going on at cbgiddy.com all month long, all of February. We got... Pretty much every uh, tuner, every type of guitar tuner we sell on sale. Uh, most of the unwired pickups, the the bridge, you know, the hardtail bridges, the the necks, uh, the the standard line of necks and fretboards, uh, fretted and unfretted. So much good stuff. All of the strings, all of our strings, and every one of those is made in America, except those ukulele strings. But all of the cigar box guitar strings are made in the USA. Very proud of that. Uh, the coupon code, all one word, all uppercase, I love Giddy. A kind of a play on the old I Love Lucy show. So get over there, check it out. We created a whole category tree that holds all of the stuff that's on sale. 25% off in addition to the free rewards. Mm -hmm. You get your free shipping at 50 bucks. So is this for today only? No. What? It's all month long, Glenn. Oh, my Jeez. How many memos have I sent? I don't know. All right, so anyway, we're building a diddly bow. And as many of you already know, diddly bows can be built from a lot of things, and we're going to demonstrate that after we finish the kit. I'm going to get about halfway done. Camera's going to switch, and you're going to get a little bit of... Oh, jeez. That's good. A little bit of walk corner. Uh, then we're going to come back, finish the diddly bow, and then antics will ensue. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay, so... Uh, this diddly bow kit uses a dowel for the neck, a 32 inch dowel that comes with the kit. Uh, the first piece of the instructions after verifying your kit inventory and everything is to sand or file a slope, a taper into what will be the headstock. The purpose, and you could cut it, you know, you could just notch it down however you want to do it. Uh, if you've got a rasp or a, a disc sander or a belt sander, you put that taper into it. That's so the tuner shaft will come all the way through. We're then going to drill a couple of holes in each end of our little cigar box here, our cute little Aurora series cigar box. A couple of one inch holes, because this is a one inch dowel. Going to put that dowel through there, throw in a couple of screws to hold it in place, slap the tuner in there, put a nut in there, string it up, and uh, by God, play a little music on it. Love so, it. all Love right. It. So I already tapered the neck. Now I'm going to drill it uh, for the headstock. I'm going to need a one-inch Forstner mm -hmm. bit 
uh, Why is for, that? for drilling the box. Huh? What is it? Why is that? Uh, well, you could do it. You could drill a smaller hole and, and use a, a round file or a, a keyhole saw. Or There's different ways, but basically um, to get a one inch, roughly one inch hole in the box ends for this dowel to go through. What the one inch dowel was my indicator. <laughs> So one inch bit for one inch dowel. Okay. What is... So I'm going to put a quarter inch bit in this here power drill. Now you can use whatever tools. You can use a hand crank drill. Nothing. Seen it done. I've, I got, I've seen it done in a Glenn Watt video. 16 inch bit people. Um, now when drilling this hole, I always like to have a little uh, scratch all, you know, a sharp pointed all to do starter holes. So at the one inch point here, one inch from the top end, I'm going to do a starter hole. And when drilling this tuner shaft, and this goes for cigar box guitars, whenever you're mounting tuners, you want the drill bit to be perpendicular to, at an exact right angle to, where the tuner plate will be mounting. Because if you drill a <laughs> hole at an angle and then try to force that tuner up through it and screw that plate to the wood and it's at an angle, it's going to either force the gears super tight together or it's going to pull them apart. So you want an exact right angle to the back of, to where that tuner plate's going to mount. So normally I'd use a drill press for this, but I don't have a drill press in here. Also, when using power tools, of course, follow all manufacturer safety guidelines. Wearing eye, ear, face, nose, foot, Protection, whatever. Kevlar, body suits, I don't know. Keep your beard away from the chest. All right. So now we have a quarter inch hole in our headstock. And I can take the tuner from the handy dandy hardware bits bag. Get that all dumped out here so I can scatter them all over the floor by mistake. Don't sneeze. <laughs> it's going to take my open gear tuner and insert it here so that the gear, the brass gear, is pointing down the neck towards where the cigar box will be, not the other way around. With a one string instrument like this, it's potentially not as critical as on some other guitars, but it's good to get in the habit of mounting that tuner aligned correctly. Anybody saying anything out there, Glenn Watt? People got the love for it, I know that. Wait, no. And Jim Burt, thank you very much for contributing this to, to what it is that we do here. I think you're awesome. He's got some great advice. Please read all directions on all kits. I think that is terrific you know, advice. That really is good advice. And to expand on that a little, reading the instructions all the way through before you start really gives you an idea of where you're going to end up, how you're going to get there, so that when you actually start doing it, you're less likely to miss a key step. So good advice, Jim Burt. Absolutely. Even for something that is ostensibly as simple as a diddly bow, yeah, you no don't want to screw it up. Don't want to screw it up. <laughs> exactly. So I'm putting a 1 16th inch bit in my drill right now. I'm going to kick this up to, that's a little better, uh, for drilling a couple of pilot holes. So what I did, according to the instructions, I put the tuner in place as a dry fit. I then made starter holes with my punch all through the mounting holes in the base plate. And now I'm just going to do a quick little pilot hole. Now it's recommended that you actually, you can put a little bit of blue painter's tape on your drill bit uh, as a depth guide so you don't go blasting through the front of your headstock. It's very, another good habit to get into. Because by God, as most of you who build a cigar box guitar know, it is easy to just shove that drill bit right through the front of your headstock and... Not the end of the world, but hey, you know, why not uh, not do it? Hello to you as well, Ken Noland. Hey, Ken. And Dutch Wigman. Good to see Dutch. you, sir. Good to see you indeed. I'm sure it's cold out there in the Midwest for you. Jack Jones, thanks for joining us. So Here. now I am mounting this tuner to my neck by inserting the small screws through the base plate and into the wood. These dowels that we include with this kit are... Uh, poplar, uh, which is uh, one of the softer hardwoods, which is a lot more forgiving with screws. You know, if you don't pre-drill your pilot holes, say you lost your 16th inch bit or whatever, um, 
Poplar is a lot more forgiving. You, you can often get a screw in place without the head twisting off. Now you try that nonsense with hard maple or oak or hickory or ash, you're going to twist the head right off that thing and now you're stuck with part of a screw shank in there and they're very difficult to get out. So pre-drilling is always a good habit to get into, I think. But there ain't no rules, so do what you want. All right, now my tuner is mounted there in my headstock, and the tuners we include with this kit are actually two hole tuners. They got one more towards the end of the shaft, and then one about halfway down, which depending on how you do your taper there, may or may not be visible. Um, okay, so next, let me get all my bits, my bits out of the way here, over here into the bits box. So I got my tuner mounted, now it's time to drill and install the nut. Now to keep things easy with this kit, instead of having to notch and put a wooden nut or something in there, we use a slotted machine screw. You can't see that probably, but this is an 8 seconds by 3 quarter inch slotted head machine screw. So we drill a hole for it, put that in there, and that slot holds the string perfectly in place and serves as a nut. So I'm going to change my drill over to the eighth inch bit. Good friend Tom Petrie is saying that old broom handles work great for oh, diddly bow yeah. necks. Absolutely. Agreed. Well, speaking of diddly bows, uh, I got a couple of examples hanging here. This is an <laughs> antique diddly it. bow I got off of eBay or at an antique shop with these hand carved at, uh, S or F holes down there, a single string, and then over on Glenn's left. Mm. That is a Johnny Lobo. He calls it the cat. He's got a hand wound single coil pickup in here that he made. The one string double dowel neck. Uh, and I'll tell you what, Johnny can play the hell out of one of these. Yes, he can. So just a couple of examples of diddly bows other folks have built. All right, so I got my eighth inch bit in here. I've made a mark three inches down from the headstock according to the instructions, which is where the nut is going to be placed. So I'm going to do my starter hole. <clears throat> and then I'm going to drill. All right. Yeah. And since this is a 8 30 seconds uh, machine screw, it should be just right to be snug in this hole I drilled. So I can take my Actually, the instructions suggest taking your scratch awl and kind of uh, making a taper, widening out a taper at the top of your drilled hole because that makes it easier mm -hmm. to get your machine screw started. Lo and behold, it's true. If you just, mostly true. <laughs> um, so again, uh, thank you. I see Pete Corbett says he's out on Cape Cod. Ah, oh, there you are. You know, Pete. often you the Cape, uh, we're just up here in New Hampshire, Pete, uh, as you probably know, but the Cape often has a little bit warmer weather sticking out into the Atlantic there than kind of like Nantucket and, and Martha's Vineyard will often be a bit warmer than we are up here on the frozen edge of civilization. Don't gouge yourself with your screwdriver, folks. That leaves a mark. Well, the Cape is beautiful, and I'm glad that you joined us, man. Thank you very much, Pete. And Shaq made his last bow out of an old boat oar. That's nice. pretty awesome. Nice think, done. I think we saw pictures of that. Didn't he upload pictures of that to the Giddy uh, customer so, thing? So, yeah. I think so. I, I remember seeing the boat oar. Um, all right. So now the string is going to come from the tuner up and over my nut and run on down the neck there. All so right. it is time... I, what I'll do, Glenn, I'll drill the box. Yeah. Because this is going to be some good live TV, folks. My Forstner bit isn't that sharp. <laughs> These get a lot of use out in the Giddy shop. This box, I don't even know if it's MDF. It, it's, well, actually, yeah, it, it's hardboard. Um, so this is going to be interesting. If, if you see, what do we call it? A, if the camera is obscured by a pink mist, don't worry, everything's fine. 
<laughs> go to the color bars. Boop. Technical difficulties. Please stay tuned. So Shaq and Dave Gatton, Shaq Collis and Dave Gatton are both extending kind words. Thank you for saying that they enjoy what you're doing here now. This live building assembly type segment yeah. part of the show. So thank you. That's very oh, kind of you to say. It's also it's nice to get positive feedback, which is it's great to hear great guys, but it's great to hear this is what's great. So thank you. It's mm. good to know that you enjoy this. Thank you. You're not going to be able to really see me drilling the hole because I've clamped this box to my tabletop with two clamps to hold it in place. Because when you're using a Forstner bit, they're really designed more for drill presses, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Using it in a handheld, like, like if I was trying to hold this box and use this Forstner bit and I slipped. Oh, not good. Oh, good lord. Seen it happen. I'd be a pile of hamburger on the bench. All right, so Jim Morris and Lazy Left Eye say we need a drum roll for this. <laughs> All right. That's a dull bit, people. Um, <laughs> and it's always that second where you, that instant where it breaks through, and then it's just, all right. There ain't no trouble here, though. <laughs> hey oh! There it is. Ain't no trouble. So that's one side with a nice one inch hole in it. Now I get to do the other one. And, uh, just to be clear, I had pre-measured, according to the instructions, found the halfway point on the box, measured down three quarters of an inch to get this uh, neck placement properly spaced. So I'm not just freehanding it back here, although <clears throat> you certainly could. You could. There ain't no rules. Matthew Simpson, Magic Daddy's out there with uh, paddle bits as a on a, as an alternative to uh, to Forster bits. Yes, sir. Yeah, Very good. and that would probably cut even faster, but those are. Those are also rather scary <laughs> in a handheld drill. Uh, but you know what? The, the best way, what, I, what I'd like to have for this is actually a saw, uh, a sawtooth bit that has finer saw teeth and burnt, blast right through there, but I don't have a one inch one of those, so here we go. What could go wrong? <laughs> My box is drilled. Yes. The doubt. Now this box is a little interesting. Often we supply the standard. What's the name for the boxes where the lids fit down in? There's a. Oh, chest style. Chest style. No. No, I Flat think top. this is chest yeah, style. Chest style. Uh, where I actually drilled Flat through part of the lid and part of the base. What is it? Clam. Clam. Maybe. Oh, yeah, it could be clam shell. So. so now I can take my my neck dowel, extend it through the box. Mm which is how this is set up to be. Nicely done. So, Glenn, I will continue on this. I'm just going to walk you through what I'm going to do. Drill a couple of holes, put these longer inch and inch long screws down through those holes to hold the neck to the box. Then I'm going to measure according to the measurements shown in the instructions. Put some fret markers on here to show where the positions are. She ends up being, I think, 24 and a half inch scale, something like that. Um, but it, all the in, all the measurements are given in the instructions. Uh, then I'm gonna string it up and be ready to go. Uh, so right. you've got some walk corner goodness lined up for us over there, I think. Ba -da -ba -da. What do we have? Hey, just remember, don't worry, be happy. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. All right, y'all. Are we here? We're here. All right, good stuff, man. So, I think it's still me. Still hey, me. I'm getting there. No, it's on. good. Ben's a better bet than I. Than me, I know that. So. I, wouldn't I, like take, I wouldn't take that bet, people. Da, 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 da. So there he is. Now, first off, what we have. Welcome back to Walk Corner. It's been a super long time since I've spoken to you about how awesome you all are. Uh, but today, thankfully, I had that opportunity. So welcome back to Walk Corner. Thank you for joining us for the Giddy Gang Show. And uh, remember to check out the sale that we're running at cbgiddy.com right now, whereas uh, for the rest of the month of February, uh, the coupon code, all one word, in all capital letters, I love Giddy, will get you 20, 25% off the products that you see. They're not everything, but a lot of the all essential the core stuff. bits, the, the good stuff. 
You don't want the basket? We don't have no basket. Hey. All right, now, first up, we have KCM, my good man KCM. And this is, there's a bit of a theme to this show, uh, as there will be a theme to what, the next thing that's written and posted on the news section of cbgiddy.com, something that I hope that you're paying attention to recently. It's, uh, we got some good stuff going up. KCM shares with us, and I love this, I build with my dad and out of my garage. Our cigar box guitar company, Flying Pig Guitars, just finished its first year. Congratulations, KCM. Uh, when I found this feral flying pig box, this box is awesome, and I know a bunch of you out there already know that, y'all you know, built it uh, already. When I found this feral pig, flying pig box, I wanted to do something special, so I thought I'd try my first resonator guitar. I think it looks awesome, and I'm glad that you shared that, and moreover, I'm glad that you and your father, working together, bringing together uh, your interests, uh, have had your first year anniversary for flying pig guitar, so that's awesome, KCM, thank you. Next up, we have from Scott M. He and his father, which I love this. This is awesome. Great photo. Very, 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 very cool. And Scott writes, I have always wanted to make a guitar project with my father, who was a carpenter. We had such a blast, and this was their first guitar together, their first guitar period. We had such a blast, and I will cherish this guitar that we made together forever. I think that's a wonderful experience. I hope that uh, your father, I'm sure your father feels the same way, and I hope that you really do remember it forever. This is downright awesome. Thank you very much, Scott M. So maybe you're seeing the theme develop here. Next up, from Stevos, good man Stevos. See, he writes, these are builds, what you can see there in left and right, well, my left, your right, whatever, one of those two, uh, are builds number 12 and 13, which were birthday presents for my niece and my wife's best friend's son, right, Stevos. They've both really wanted one since I gave my daughters each one for their birthdays in August. Love this, Stevos. I love building and playing cigar box guitars, but the feeling I get when I give one away is second to none. There's something beautiful about putting your heart and soul into something, building it with your bare hands, and giving it away to bring joy into someone else's life. Dramatic pause. That's what I'm doing. Absolutely. When they see them, the look on their faces are priceless. Everyone tells me I should sell them, and most likely I will, but for the last year I've been building and playing and giving them away, and can't put a price on the joy of giving the gift of music. Right on, Stevos. Thank you very much for sharing that. I love just people coming together, just forgetting other things, and coming together over the joys of hand-built musical instruments and music in general, and I think that is terrific. We need more of it. Which is actually good that I should say that, because next up is Jim B. Not Jim Burt. Jim Burt. Another, another friend of ours, Jim B. About this beautiful instrument. Now, I just, if you can just kind of take a moment to look at it, look at the different components, the different parts of it. Uh, Jim B. writes, I wanted to honor my nephew for his service in the Marine Corps. For this CBG, I use the true Marine Corps dress blue colors. The metal medallion that sits to the upper back on the face of the guitar was the starting point on how this guitar was going to look, which I think he did a great job, by the way, Jim B. Uh, I installed LED lights inside the box to backlight the emblem. You can kind of see some LEDs there. You can see it right next to the volume control, that red LED. Uh, Jim used one of our premium white oak necks with pad up fretboard that you really don't see pictured, but I think he made a great choice there. And lastly, I'd like to say that Jim also chose to use, and you, only, you get a sideways look at it, they're great, they just sound awesome, and they're wound right here in the giddy shop. Jim writes, American Pri he installed an American Pride single coil pickup, hand wound in the good old USA right in the CB giddy shop, yeah, which is perfect for this project. And I know that thing rocks, and I just love the way it looks, and the best thing about it is uh, the intent the, uh, the, the passion and the respect that you have behind this instrument and the gift for, who, to, for whom it's being given. I think that's great stuff, Jim, and uh, thank you for honoring our service members. And, and I don't, and, you know, a lot of you out there, like, you know, they focus on, you know, the, this is the United States military service member, but if it's a service member in your country, whether you're in England, Scotland, Wales, or whether you're in France or Germany, like, I tip my hat to y'all for serving your country. I think this is just fantastic stuff. So thank you, Jim B., for sharing that with us. Next up. And it's, it's winding down, but I'm trying to get the good stuff in here. Take you your got time, from what? Poker Steve. From Poker Steve, which I love this thing, because I don't often see this. This might break the theme a little bit, but what, I was, what I had going on here in the corner segment, but I love this look. Poker Steve writes, this is the second edition of my Penny Blue Guitar, Penny Blues Guitar Series. This guitar was made from a copper serving tray, giving a nice size and tone. And I love thinking about that, that just a nice, large copper serving tray made into this guitar. 
uh, giving it a nice size and tone, matched by Snake Oil Neck and Bridge Mini Humbucker Pickups from CB Giddy Craft Supply. Awesome choice, and it looks amazing. He also has some other CB Giddy uh, stylings on there, being the the F -hole, the Wheat Penny F hole covers, uh, the thin ones. Uh, bridge that we have here as well that both made right here in the shop in Rochester, New Hampshire, good old USA. Uh, bah, 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 bah. There will be more of these Penny Blues guitars made and that will, two more, excuse me, and that will end the series. I hope, Poker Steve, if you're seeing this or if you see this, regardless of whether it's live or recorded, that you can also submit uh, the last two guitars to uh, our website as well because I'd love to, if, you know, if you do, I'd love to feature them on there because we like your guitars. And last up, thank you very much, Poker Steve. Last up is our good friend down in North Carolina, Magic Daddy. Now, Magic Daddy, if we can kind of stay on this picture for just a moment and just kind of try to take it in. I know it's it's tough, but just try to take it in. What do you got here is a guitar and an amp. And about this, Magic Daddy, and there's some other pictures to support what you'll see next. But if you can stay on this for a second. Magic Daddy writes, this was a commission build for a bulldozer designer operator at Cat Headquarters, Cat in the States, I'm sure you see it elsewhere, is Caterpillar. The name brand, Earth Moving Equipment, Caterpillar, a large company. So again, bulldozer designer operator at Cat Headquarters. Now the challenge here was building a bulldozer from a cigar box and then converting it into an instrument. The customer that commissioned this build contacted me in June, contacted Matt in June, and we discussed what he wanted and I started building. We had been in several, con excuse me, we had been in contact several times throughout the build process and had gotten to know each other on a more personal level, during which I learned that he had been diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer, and this build was giving him something to look forward to. Unfortunately, he passed away before it was finished. It was a hard blow to me because I was thinking I was building a guitar that would never be played. After speaking with a few Cigar Box Nation members that I consider my friends, I decided I was being selfish, writes Matt. It's not about being played, it's about providing a memory for a loved one of that person. And you, sir, are a beautiful man, and I think this is terrific. And, and Nick, if I'm sorry, if you wouldn't mind going on the next image so we can just kind of show people what, what he was up to. Now look at the headstock. He's got the, the bucket attachment on, a, on like a, uh, sorry, like a backhoe bucket loader type thing. He's got a bucket attachment on the headstock. And the next picture that Nick has for you, you can see here. Now, check this out, the treads the treads of a bulldozer. You're like, oh, what did you pick that up at the dollar store or something? No, man, he didn't pick it up at the dollar store because in the next picture you'll see, he hand carved tank treads, and maybe you can't see it in the picture, but he wired them together with copper wire. So they're all connected on this functioning, I call them, sorry, not tank treads, bulldozer treads. And in the last image, I think it's the last image that we have, uh, you'll see that uh, he hand carved the bucket, the, the front, the, the blade, excuse me, the blade on the front of the earth mover. And you can see a couple other attachments there that he hand carved. Like this, I've seen a lot of cool stuff. I mean, and I'm not <clears throat> ranking things, but I've never seen anybody take the time and the care to hand carve so many items uh, for such a wonderfully themed instrument. And I think it's really awesome that you did that, Matt. Matt wasn't sharing this with me to for any sort of <clears throat> fanfare, but I just couldn't help but but shared here. So I think what you did was awesome, Matthew and Magic Daddy. And I hope that uh, I hope that the recipient, loved one of uh, your friend, uh, enjoys your guitar as much as, as at least as much as I do, and I'm sure they do. So thank you very much because that has been a walk corner. Walk corner. 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 Now back over to Ben. I'm assuming. Back over to Ben. Uh, Nick, can you? Yes. Um, I just want to say uh, when Matthew was struggling with how to handle that guitar, what to do with it. He asked some folks for advice. Um, and one thing you got to keep in mind, in that case, the original recipient of the guitar, of course, would never hold it or play it. But when you put an instrument out in the world, you never know where it's going to end up, where it's going to go, who it may inspire. It could end up being the grandson or the granddaughter of the guy you build it for, who one day is like, huh, you know, grandpa's uh, bulldozer guitar and picks it up and picks out a little tune and who knows where it could go. So I, my advice is and was, you know, put it out there and, and then let, uh, let fate take it. Anyway, what we got here is a diddly bow. As I said, I drilled a couple of holes 
and put the two small screws down through the lid of the box into the neck. Uh, the placement of the neck through the box leaves a little bit of air space so that that top can resonate. Um, I put marks on the neck just with a pencil and a ruler using the measurements given in the guide. Uh, and with fretless instruments, it's it's close. You know, if it's within a sixteenth of an inch or even an eighth, uh, it's close enough. Can you grab a pick yeah, off man. of the music stand there? That's um, sometimes these tuners. Actually, there was a discussion on Facebook earlier about tuners, uh, different types of tuners. Some have screws <laughs> that hold on the buttons. Some are the buttons are molded right on to the shaft. Sometimes when the, there's one that's held on by a screw, if that screw isn't tight enough, that button can rattle. Mm. So I now have... I'm not much of a diddly bow player, folks, I ain't gonna lie. Done, so that, thank you that's very generous <laughs> so that is a cigar box diddly bow uh took what oh, 10 12 yeah. minutes to build um it's great it's fun to play now it comes with the string i think it's 17 uh plain steel 17 gauge string and i just wanted to quickly take this string back off so i've got a couple of other options here a little bit bigger um and actually one step I skipped in the instructions was sound hole. Read I didn't, all the directions. I didn't read all the directions. Man, what good advice that is. <laughs> uh, Kim Starling brought in something while you were walk cornering. Oh, oh that fits in with that marine themed oh, guitar. Oh boy. A new Draw product something. just made available from CB Giddy using our fancy schmancy new printing methods. First um, we're calling this the Patriotic USA, and it's the first of what will be a series of printed fretboards with that full color image printed directly onto the face of the fretboard uh, with very durable, highly durable UV cured enamel inks. Uh, matches uh, that pickup you saw on the other gentleman's guitar very nicely. I just lost my bridge, so I'll be right back. So I'm not trying to uh, overdo you with a fretboard, but what I'm showing you are a fretless version with fret markers on it here. And then we also have a fully fretted version here. Now these are what scale length, Ben Baker? 25. 25. 25 inch oh, scale. Read those. Read those things. Things. You ever lose a part off your bench down onto the floor? Never. 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 <gasps> See? Sometimes it just I takes. Know. Thank you. <laughs> takes another pair of eyes. So anyway, I'm going to take this plain steel string back off. And whilst, while, while it's off, I overuse whilst. Who's keeping count? Well, somebody. Somebody knows, actually. I'm going to pop this extremely dull Forstner bit back in here. Throw it. Sorry. Throw a sound hole in. Can you hold? Yes, I can. I will. Thank you. Got it. Rich Lewin, thank you for joining us, sir. Joining us, sir. Now, generally, it's best to do your sound hole before you screw the box shut, because you might end up with a tab of rattly bits. Rattly bits in the box. Yeah, it's just resonation. At that I point. assure you, folks, trained professionals here have d definitely done this before. Good stuff. Good you stuff. You built the windows on here before. Huh? Built the diddly bow on here. Well, not not from the kit. No. And actually, I'm going to, oh well. All right, so now it's just got a sound hole, uh, but I want to do something else at the same time because I, I've got something special right here. I was thinking at first to put in one of our gold foil pickups in it. Yes. Um, but that seemed a little overkill. But where's that wired? Uh, there she is. 
Dave Gatton's gun. I'm sorry. Go on the floor, of course. Of course. Here's the diddly bow Nick was talking about that I built on stage once. Just using a plank of wood, a couple old medicine bottles, some square nails, and a string. Those med you attach the string and you shove those medicine bottles right up underneath it. Hold them in place with a screw that puts tension on the string. And then this style, you know, the, the cigar box style is designed more for holding and playing. This, uh, this board style, where'd my little drumstick go? Oh. Boy, I just keep losing stuff. <sighs> Lord How about a pencil? How about a pencil? Oh no, here it is. Okay. You can it's take a... Of course. of course it was on the... Plug, <laughs> plug it in. this into that amp there. I happen to have a prototype CB Giddy single pole one string pickup here. I'm just going to show it briefly. You get but a glimpse of something funky going on on there. Can you see what's going on there? There's not just one magnet. Not just one magnet there. Actually, let's turn it this way. Let me try to keep this up and around. All right, again, I am not a diddly bow player, but I've got a slide. What I want to do... Pickup sounds awesome. Yeah, it, it's a thing. It's a thing. The, the triad style. We're still developing exactly... Jim Morris makes a terrific observation. Notice, and I quote, notice the increased resonance when placed on the table. Yes. Jim Morris. It's true, man. You can do that right on your workbench. Put, put your guitar right on there and strum it. It's going to sound entirely different. That is guru level observations right there, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, with some of these instruments, like this one, just on its own, it, I mean, it has some resonance, but if I put it on this tabletop, if I were to put it on an old wash tub or, or something like that, that vibration carries through and the whole thing becomes the resonant chamber, the resonant device. Um, so I'm not sure how well this is actually going to work out because uh, there's a neck in the way. So anyway, we're going to skip that. I, mean, I am going to put the... Uh, Ario Dante Dantilio is watching. The younger. What? The youngin. That can't be right. He is far too hip. Good to, to see watch you, Ario. Ario! Hey! -o. We were just talking about Ario earlier. That's uh, true. He is a fine player of he keyboards. Many instruments. I think he can play the bass, mm -hmm. ukulele, all sorts of things. Yeah, guitar. But I got to thinking the other night, and his brother, Dominic, plays the drums quite well. Among other things. So I am thinking of a uh, like a homemade cocktail drum set, kind of the, the all self-contained. We get Dom in here playing the drums, and get Ario if I can find an old spinet piano, or one of those foot pump little parlor organs or something by god be awesome it would be a thing you've got a couple of new nicknames today uh, I, uh steven two hawks hammerhead ben bow by the way good to see you steven two hawks hammerhead ben bow based on the uh, deadly bow action oh. and i think dave gatton had another one too it was uh oh i lost it dave i'm sorry but i think it was basically yes ben diddly bow baker ben diddly bow They're boxcar both... ben diddly bow bingo bingo bongo call All me right. anything but late to the bar so stringing up with a la heavier gauge. This is a 48, or maybe it's substantially or heavier know. gauge. It's a big old, it's a big old something or other. Yep. There and now is. I've got a sound hole, so when played, this is an old uh, high Public casing. Yeah, big one. tricky to get it all in there but anyway that is the cb giddy diddly bow kit and and as you can see from this this hunk of wood with a couple old bottles on it you don't need this kit to build yourself a diddly bow you can build your own this walks you through it maybe it's good to start with but, good starter but you can go out on guard on trash day most communities have trash day and people put all their stuff out especially if your community has a day where you can put anything out and they'll haul it oh, away love and those days just love them whatever you know in-laws whatever you put them out there and woof, they're gone uh 
Those are awesome days for picking. Uh, find an old broom with a wooden handle. Right. Boom, in the in is. the car it goes. Uh, find um, something for a resonator, an old uh, can or cookie tin or gas can or box or what you know. The idea is a, a, a deter laundry detergent bottle. You know, people have built musical instruments out of so many things. And most of you know that, but I'm hoping there might be some newcomers out there who yes. have maybe never really considered this crazy idea that, wait, you can build your own guitar? You can build your own instrument and make music on it? It, it doesn't have to come down from the ivory towers at Martin or Gibson? Wow, I never thought of that. That's a revelation I had years ago. Most of us have had that revelation at some point. Maybe some of us were born with it, but not this guy. Jim Morris had one about brute force snare. Brute force, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. Sharp tools, sharp tools are good. Um, so, I haven't looked at the script in a while. We got a little bit more for you. Yes. And then I'm gonna come back here to this bench and just sweep it all off and do one more piece of diddly bow excitement. Got another Hercules. song. Hercules! Don't oh, yeah. forget for the other song. I'm not forgetting. All right. It's a, it's a wonderful classic right. country song. It'll take me about 15 minutes to get back to the other stage, folks. It's in a different studio entirely. So <laughs> see you again soon. Oh, <clears throat> and we're back. Hey. <laughs> the Oh, the, mat, the wizardry, the wizardry of modern uh, television, folks. So you're probably tired of hearing it by now, but uh, big sale going on. One of the biggest sales we've had in recent history. 25% off of the core grouping of products that many of them I've been carrying from the beginning. Um, you know, we're coming up on the 8th anniversary. It was back in 2011. In February, I think the 11th, that I quit my day job as a computer programmer and went full time doing this crazy CB Giddy uh, thing, selling parts to like-minded folks out there. Some of which uh, seem, you know, Henry Lohman was there at the beginning, and right. folks like Ted Crocker and, and Shane Spiel, of course, was there well before I got into it. But it's been, you know, eight years. Uh, Actually, back in December, December 28th was the 10-year anniversary of the first set of fret wire I sold on eBay. Wow. So you are now surrounded by the two basement dwellers with you. It's true. Yeah, it is true. Uh, <laughs> the two, well, the first, the first CB Giddy helper was Mr. Dan Caldwell. Oh yes. Uh, who would stop by of an evening to help cut fret wire oh. and, and package things, and then. Kim and Glenn came on board, and then, by God. He did that for beer, though. It's been a hell of a run. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did it in exchange for parts, because Dan's uh, a, a sure. builder as well. So, we have a song for you now that was written by Garth Brooks. Uh, he actually co-wrote it with Patricia Husson, Hutton, somebody like that. Uh, it's one of the more beautiful songs I think that Garth has ever written and performed. And I read a, a, it's called The River. You've probably heard it at some point. I saw an interview with Garth where he said this song is still the one that he tends to get the most letters about from fans. And... <clears throat> no, a dream is like a river. Ever changing as it flows, and a dream is just a vessel that must follow where it goes, trying to learn from what's behind him, never knowing what's in store, makes each day a constant battle, just to stay between the shores. Till 
what we put off till tomorrow has now become today. So don't you sit upon the shoreline and say you're satisfied. Choose to chance the rapids and dare to brave the tide. And I will sail my vessel till the river runs dry. Like a bird upon the wind, these waters are my sky. I'll never reach my destination if I never try. So I will sail my vessel till the river runs dry. And there's bound to be rough waters, and I know I'll take some falls. But with the good Lord as my captain, I can make it through them all. Percentages who was converted into a saint at some point. So it's an old Irish Celtic holy day here today, uh, uh, kind of celebrating the return of the light and the fact that, you know, it might be butt cold out there, but just a month or so and it'll be March, and then not long after that it'll be April and we'll see greenery. Anyway, That's right. back to the bench, because right. I'm going to do something wacky. So while you're uh, Going over there, if I can just audio style this uh, events coming up, so, yeah, that buddy. Miss it, so that we don't miss it. Uh, the tomorrow, I know Shane's already talking about this, but for the past several months, I've been telling you about the Carolinas Box Guitar Club meeting number 37. It's tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Big Al's Pub and Grubberia in uh, North Carolina. I forgot hey. the town. I'm sorry, but if you hey. go to CigarBoxNation.com, hey. if you don't go there already, you should. And on the events section, you'll find this tomorrow again. The Cigar Box Guitar Club meeting in Carolina. Uh, Uncle Fred, the uh, Cigar Box Nation member, does a great job organizing and bringing it together. I mean, trying out loud, he's got number 37 in, uh, almost in the book, so I think that's terrific. Woo. And then in a week, we've got uh, the next next Saturday is the CBG Minded Michiganders monthly meeting, uh, February 19th again, or February 9th again, uh, from 1 to 5 at Red Sky Stage. It's a monthly gathering of friends who build, play musical instruments, and uh, everyone's open to everyone, free to go. And last announcement, if I may. On Cigar Box Nation, please go check out. Please, please, please. Emphasis is there for a reason. Check out what Dave Linus is doing. He's got these. Uh, he's got a three-part storytelling video series, uh, where it's his artwork, him playing and singing, and a story or him playing and then storytelling about a uh, he and other uh, Cigar Box Nation member, Uncle John. 
uh, traveling across the southwest to the fictional California Cigar Box Guitar Festival. And uh, they they're they joined up by another Cigar Box Nation member. Please go check out Dave Linus's three-part video storytelling series on Cigar Box Nation. Ben Woo! Baker. We can't stop here. This is back country. You coming over, Glenn? What? I'm coming over. Here's what I'm going to do. Out of the booth. Uh, to build upon what I was saying earlier about how many different things can be a, a, a diddly bow, I'm going to turn the giddy piano crate bench itself oh, yes. into a diddly bow. Nice. And I'm going to do it with a bass guitar string, an 80 oh. gauge, 0 .080 bass guitar string. I picked this because bass guitar strings are a little longer than regular guitar strings. I couldn't find my spool of braided stainless steel clothesline. I thought I, it's around here somewhere. I couldn't find it because I wanted it to go the whole length. Had to give up on that. But by God, I've got this. So basically I'm going to do this as simply as possible. All right. I'm going to make a loop with the ball end of the string kind of a, a noose almost. I'm going to pop a screw into the tabletop down here. Do it. I'm doing it. Do it. I'm doing it. Man. Giving it a little bit of back angle. You probably can't see it. You get the idea. A little bit of back angle there. Popping this over it, pulling it tight. All right. Now at the other end, I've got to put another screw in. Oh, we got wizardry. Wizard. wizard. I love it. The wizard. Wizardry. Oh, of course he backs up right at the... <laughs> um, I'm going to pop another screw in and I just got to kind of wrap it around down here. I guess you could redirect that other camera. This, this was not entirely planned out, folks, so there shall be shenanigans, antics, and other tomfoolery. Which the savvy viewer has come to expect. I, Imagine. It's All right. The closest to actual camera work I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna wrap that around a couple of times, and then try to. I don't know. Bass strings are a little trickier to work with. Of course, I didn't bring any pliers in here because that would have required a lot of planning. But the idea is you get it pretty much as tight as you can by hand so that then what you shove underneath there. Um, can you go get me a, a, small, a set of pliers? A set of pliers. Uh, Glenn's running to get a set of pliers so that I can grab the end of this string and pull it back through to kind of make a loose, almost like a knot. I guess you'd call it if this was string. Um, and I got a couple of spacer pieces that I'm hoping will let me get the tension that I need to actually get a note out of this thing and turn the giddy workbench here into a deadly bow. All right. So for spacers, I've got a cut. I got a piece of. Uh, Copper or brass tubing. I got this. Uh, there we go. Thank you, buddy. So I'm gonna just try to grip that. There we go. Yeah. Just enough so it won't slip too much once I start getting it under tension. So of course, right now, it's not much of a diddly bow, is it? So if I get this one under this side, and I found there's a lot of different ways to deal with this. I have found that just popping a, a screw down in there to hold it in place. What you got there, Glenn? Ben Foolery. Ben Foolery. Well, I've been called worse. By Ben, no. That's not true. I just have to make sure that screw doesn't uh, get in the way of the string. Because that's one of the few rules. You know, we often say there are no rules, but I have found that a, a good solid guideline is that you don't want anything messing up the ability of the string to vibrate. So I've rolled this brass tube cut off in there and I'm going to pop another screw in just to kind of keep it in place. Now uh, there are stories, true stories, of blues men down in the Mississippi Delta and such who would actually uh, use the posts of their front porch 
and run a wire down it, stick a couple bottles underneath there, and turn like this post over here. I was thinking of doing it out of the, the Juke Shack uh, porch post here, turning the entire porch, essentially the entire cabin, into one big diddly bow resonator. Um, so I have no idea what the scale length is of this. I've got a ruler, but that would be cheating. I'm going to get some of this crap off of here. Fortunately, I did not use every slide-like item in the construction of my diddly bow. And uh, I'm getting all this stuff off because it's likely to rattle once I start wailing away on this thing. Um, actually, Glenn Watt, why don't we just, you know, since we're here, because it's you, why don't we just slap a, why don't we just slap this little uh, pickup underneath here, just for fun. Just for fun. I'm, gonna, I'm using these as spate. I'm using wooden spacers to get the pickup, our triad style pickup here, right up close. I'm going to pop a small drill bit into my drill. Jim Morris did this on the back wall of the outhouse a while back. <laughs> well done, sir. You wait till somebody else goes in and then give them a little serenade. Yeah. <laughs> service. Can't get this just anywhere, folks. Thankfully. I think there's laws in some place. Alright, so I'm just going to hold this down temporarily. I think I drilled too far down with that screw. Yep, I did. Oh well. Move it down half a half a smudge there. Alright. Plug it in, plug it in. Coming through. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Now it might be a little too close. <laughs> uh, the height of my bridges is limited. So what I'm going to do? Take that screw out. Take my spacer out. I probably have to crank the gain a little bit more, Glenn, to um, get it to respond now because it's a good over an eighth of an inch further away. Yeah, boy, I feel the rumble. Throw some crunch on there. Just, just hit all the buttons, all the buttons, mash them about. Get my drumstick. talking about scale length on cbgiddy.com a little bit like lately no matter what the scale length is of a diddly bow like this exactly halfway is going to be your octave so there's the octave right there and what by my ear i can tell is the center if i had a pencil i'd make a mark but at this point so it definitely has a rumble to it. Uh, try it. Try it with the amp off, Glenn. I want to see how just the table itself. Uh... It makes sound, as they say, <laughs> forged in fire, they say, it will kill. Well, this won't kill, but it'll, it'll twang. So, uh, let me make the trek back over. Thank you for joining us, sticking with us. It's uh, 20 minutes past the hour now. Um, I don't play it on this, but I could. We're going to take you out with the Giddy Gang theme song. It's been a while, Glenn Watt, since we've played this. That's yeah, the truth. Over a month. Oh, all those buttons he mashed. <laughs> up, yeah. up the buzzer wheel. Yeah, so when I felt that, I forgot to grab it. Bring the gain back down, that should quiet it down. Don't worry.
worry folks, trained professionals here. Uh, Helen asking if they're new chairs, uh, not really. Um, one of these days, one of these days we're going to get three chairs that are all the same height and style, but not this day. This day we got what we got. Again.